This is probably the only honest review of the Samsung Odyssey G9 Neo on YouTube right now because, well, I actually bought this monitor myself. Like, Samsung didn't send it to me and I'm not going to send it back. Now, a year ago on this channel, I reviewed the original G9, which I'll link up here and down in the description. And before that, I had the Dell 49 inch ultra wide and I've been using the old G9 for a whole year now, but that didn't come without its own issues. Flickering, issues enabling HDR, even after multiple firmware updates and just a whole lot more. But today, today I finally got my hands on the newer version, the G9 Neo, which is certainly an upgrade to the G9. And whilst it is by far the best monitor that I've ever had, and I do plan on keeping it it's also been a real pain in the ass too so uh let me tell you why so when it comes to what's new with this over the previous generation we have a new mini led panel which not only makes this one of the brightest screens i've ever seen at over 2300 nits but also means it has much deeper darker backs better contrast and does fix most of the issues and complaints about my previous g9 now aside from the new panel itself not much has actually changed it is still 5120 by 1440 it still has that beautiful 1000 r curve still has g-sync free sync picture in picture picture by picture hd my 2.1 and of course the 240 hertz that everyone buys this for though there are a couple of notable differences which i only actually came across when i actually came to plug this thing in firstly samsung decided to change the inputs on this thing for well no reason at all. The G9 Neo now has two HDMI inputs instead of one and one display port instead of two. Why? Literally no idea. Secondly, we now have three quick buttons that switch between kind of game mode one, two, and three, which is great to switch between different refresh rates and picture modes. And the price for this G9 Neo has gone up because this cost me 1800 pounds. And in the US, it comes in at 2499. So this is by far a premium price product. And speaking of price, I know this is a new product, but if I spot any discounts or if you want to just go and grab one yourself, then I will We'll include some links down below to buy this one or maybe a slightly older version if you want to grab one for yourself and like i said before i did pay for this myself i spent over 1800 pounds on this thing and in fact this is probably one of very very few reviews on youtube from someone who's actually bought one themselves and not been given one by samsung thank you samsung if i don't cover something in this video then just ask in the comments down below because yes well i am actually planning on keeping this for the foreseeable future even with a few issues and of course even though we are it's now 2200 to 22 000. wow subscribe right now. I still try my best to reply to every single comment, so uh, why not challenge me? Anyway, first up we have that curve because this is one of very, very few screens that actually has a 1000R curve, which basically means that the curve is much curvier. It means that when using an ultra wide screen like this, when turning your head, the screen actually stays pretty much the same distance away from your eyes and you won't actually have to lean into the edges that I have done when I've had like the previous Dell 49 inch, which has a much more standard 1800R curve. Overall, it just makes it far more comfortable to use for an extended period of time, like when you're either working at your desk all day or just having that like monster gaming session. Now on the back of this thing, we still have the same look and design of the previous screen. It's a glossy white plastic back with their infinity core lighting in the middle, which I'll be honest, basically useless. Most probably will probably put their desk against a wall like this. And the lighting isn't bright enough to actually do anything. I mean, it's on now, can you tell? Now, if the lighting was as bright as, say, Philips Hue LED strips, then it could reflect onto the wall and look really, really cool. But no, it even has the feature that syncs the color of the lights on the back of the screen to what's showing on the front. So it's kind of like, I guess, 50% of the way there. They just need to make them brighter to actually be of any use. But for me, just switch it off and forget that that feature actually exists for now. Cable management is actually really good with this stand as it has this, if I can find it, this cover that slides off. And then there's a route in here where you can actually, you know, wire everything and connect everything in and then hide all your cables putting the cover back on again, while still leaving the stand adjustable. And there's also a uh, pop out headphone stand on the back where you can kind of hang your headphones up. Bit of a strange position to have it hung behind your monitor, but hey ho. Now the only problem with something this big, and that is definitely what she said, is that the stand sticks out onto the desk quite far. And for me, using this IKEA Carlby kitchen worktop, it just means that I've had to push the screen off the back of my desk and against the wall for me to actually keep some form of usable space. Now, the other option, of course, is to, well, I guess buy a deeper desk or get a desk mount, which for the size of this G9 monitor means buying a HXHD Ergotron mount, which is basically the only desk mount that can manage the size and weight of these kind of 49 inch screens. And particularly the G9, which the Ergo mount is actually specifically designed for. And using a desk mount for the G9 or the G9 Neo 
personally makes all the difference in the world to me. Firstly, I can't actually quite believe how a monitor this large, this wide, and this heavy can be so easily just moved around once on this desk mount. It's it's kind of unbelievable. But with the screen mounted to my desk, it frees up that huge amount of space that was taken up by the stand and means now I can now tidy my desk and put, well, what I want where I want it. So if you are buying a G9 Neo, I would definitely recommend getting a desk mount to reclaim just all of that space that you'll lose with the stand. They can be quite expensive, yes, but I will also put a few links down below for where I found them cheapest. I'm running Windows 11 with my RTX 2080 and whilst Windows does hit 240 hertz, I really struggle to get anything even close to that in here, really. I mean, 60 FPS at the moment is my max on Forza. And from my research online, it seems that even with the latest GPUs, you're still going to struggle. But in general, just using Windows at 240 hertz is just so, so smooth. It's a massive noticeable difference to me, even when just browsing around and doing some pretty standard stuff like email and web and video. And video on this screen looks stunning. For Windows 11, now they've moved the navigation bar to the middle. Hello, Mac. And you can easily snap Windows into position so you can quickly you know, organize your Windows for the best way that works for you. Now, over in Mac land, you won't be able to get anything more than 120 hertz from this thing, which kind of sucks, to be honest. But even that is a noticeable upgrade to the standard 60 hertz you'll see on most screens. And whilst you don't have any native tools built into Mac to quickly snap panels to you know, parts of the screen. I actually find that I fit a lot more on screen than I do with Windows because I can actually size things properly. I also use a tool called Moom, M-O-O-M, which lets me save my app layout, which is pretty much using day to day. And when things start getting a bit messy with Windows everywhere, I can literally just snap everything to where it needs to be by pressing this like keyboard shortcut. Now, I've also had a few questions over the dock that I'm using and how I'm even getting 120 hertz. So I'm currently using an M1 Mac Mini, which connects to the CowDigit TS3 Plus dock using a USB-C cable. And then I have a specific cable, which I bought from Amazon, that then connects from the dock to my monitor. And it took me quite a while to find a cable that actually worked. So I'll link to that one down below just to make sure you can get it if you're struggling to. Speaking of Mac versus PC, a little Xbox versus PS5 now. Now, neither of these consoles will make that use of that full 5120 by 1440 resolution. They will, however, make use of the higher refresh rates, but you'll just be left with like the black bars down the side. Now, what you can do though, is use them side by side along with your main Mac or Windows PC to get the best of both worlds. But other than that, I actually find the picture by picture mode genuinely handy is it lets me switch between Mac and Windows fairly effortlessly. You can press a couple of buttons on the screen to enable picture by picture, and then I can switch which device I'm using with my Logitech keyboard and mouse, which have these three presets to change which device they control. Though the newer MX Master 3 mice has a really, really cool feature called Flow, which will actually, apparently, let you seamlessly switch between devices by just moving your mouse off the edge of one screen and onto the other, which also then switches the keyboard, which I really probably should try that sometime. Now it also has picture in picture mode, which I've only used a handful of times while say like reinstalling the operating system on one machine so I can kind of tuck it away in the corner and then keep an eye on what's going on. And for those of you asking, no, there isn't a built-in KVM, but I would highly recommend something like the Logitech MX range as those can quickly just switch between devices. And if we can just talk picture quality for a moment, blacks do will look black, uh, mainly because of the huge, huge upgrade in local dimming zones. So on the older G9, you had just 10 dimming zones, which meant when looking at the screen in very dark rooms, you might see some really odd behavior when moving your mouse around on screen as those dimming zones lit up. Now over on the Neo, you now get a massive upgrade to 2048 dimming zones, which means things like haloing and blooming are dramatically reduced. In terms of that HDR2000, I don't have a meter here to check, but other reviews I've seen have actually registered over 2300 nits peak brightness, which means this is just, well, ridiculously bright in a good way. So whilst I've been nice about this screen so far, what about the bad stuff that I really don't like about this screen? Well, the biggest problem that I've come across isn't the flickering. I'm glad to say that has totally gone in the G9 Neo, but it centers around their decision to switch from two display ports and one HDMI to one display port and two HDMIs because for some reason I cannot get HDMI to work properly on my PC or my Mac. I've tried all the different cables, I've enabled HDMI 2.1 and all of the other settings that the screen has and I just cannot get it to work above 60 hertz in either my Windows or Mac machines. It works fine on Xbox and PS5 over HDMI, just for some reason not on Mac or PC. If I connect my Mac to the DisplayPort, I can get 120 hertz with you know, no issues at all. If I connect my Windows PC to the display port, I can get 240 hertz with HDR enabled, no issues. Now, this probably isn't a problem for most people. I don't imagine most people have more than one machine they want to connect into this. But I'm currently working through things with Samsung to figure out what's going on. So I just hope that you don't have these same issues. It might just be unique to what I'm using here, but just be aware of it. I've also heard a lot about HDR issues, though personally, I'm yet to actually see any issues or experience any with HDR on this screen, providing that machine is connected in via that display port cable then everything just 
pretty much works. One other thing that could be improved on is the quick game kind of button modes down here. I just wish they could be customizable so I could use them to say quickly switch between picture by picture in without actually having to use like the joystick. That would be really, really handy. But legitimately, other than this, I'm at least happy to see that all of the issues I had on my previous screen have disappeared because that screen flickering did really get to me after a while. Now, is it worth the extra over the previous G9? Well, there are kind of like two possible outcomes here. Those who already own the previous generation G9 and those who don't. So to those of you who do own the older G9, then if the flickering issues and other issues maybe you're having are causing you problems, then well, yeah, this is a good upgrade because it fixes those problems at a premium price, of course. But if the image quality itself isn't bothering you, then this will only be a minor upgrade and probably not really worth the additional cost unless you can either maybe return or sell on your previous G9. To those of you who don't own the screen, then if you are looking for what is probably the very, very best of the best in terms of what is available for both productivity and gaming all in one screen, then absolutely, absolutely get one of these. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, Samsung also has their G7 range for those who think that the 49 inch is just a little bit too large. I'll link to those and everything else I've mentioned in this video down below that like button. Also, if you want to see a desk setup video for everything else I have here on the desk, then check that one out next. Otherwise, thanks for sticking with me until the very, very end, and I'll see your happy, smiling faces again soon. Until next time, cheers.